guys, how's it going? It's Misty with Kids to Cradles Nursery and I have little baby Hope here to help me with a special video that's been requested over and over and over again from a lot of my viewers. Um, if you're new here, welcome and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel if you already have. If you haven't and you like my videos, please hit that subscribe uh, button and hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos. So today we're going to do a video on how to care for your vinyl reborn. So I have my sweet little baby Hope here and I'm ready to do a little outfit change on her during this video, but we're going to talk about some things like when you first get your vinyl reborn, a lot of people, if it's their first time, or maybe you have many reborns and you might learn some things from this video, so keep watching because there's a lot of things I'm still discovering um, about caring for uh, vinyl reborns and silicone reborns. The next video coming up this week will be how to care for a silicone doll. Um, so we're going to start with the vinyl dolls first because the majority of my viewers have vinyl dolls so when you first get your baby you're gonna want to probably do what I do and the first second you get that baby and you check it all out and go through everything in the box and hold that baby you're gonna probably want to dress your baby in some cute little clothes so if you have already been shopping for your reborn I would suggest coming home, taking the tags off of all your clothes and washing them really good first. So I used Draft. It's a um, baby detergent. I just like the way that it smells. It makes the baby smell so good, like a fresh, clean newborn. And um, what I would suggest you doing, hopefully when you go shopping, you try to look for some clothes that are lighter in color. You want to try to stay away from the really, really dark clothes, the blacks, the navy blues, the really, really dark blues. Um, even some reds can bleed, really bright reds. Those dyes, those darker dyes in the clothes can bleed onto the vinyl of the doll. So I would suggest washing all clothes first before you put them on your doll and trying to pick out lighter colors if you can. So, um, I've seen this happen many times. I've seen many pictures posted on Facebook of dolls that were just completely ruined. They just have black and blue splotches all over them. You cannot get it out. Um, the second thing is if you are, especially during this time with everything that's going on, like me, when I first get my babies and I do their first changing, and we're going to do a little changing with Baby Hope. When I do a changing with my babies, um, when I do that first changing, when I first receive them, you may want to wipe them down. If your babies get dusty, because they can sit in, in a crib or cradle in the nursery, um, dolls can get dusty just like anything else. Or when you first get them, if you want to wipe them down, I would suggest using water wipes. Water wipes are not super expensive. You can find them just about anywhere. I prefer water wipes. Um, because they're very soft and they would be very easy and gentle on the skin, your baby should have a good amount of varnish on them and they should be protected, well protected, but that varnish with time will rub off and any kind of scrubbing or persistent rubbing, um, even when you're changing them and dressing them, the clothes slide over their skin, eventually that varnish will wear off and so will the paint and you may have to send your baby off to be touched up and revarnished at some point in time, especially if you're a really hands-on collector like I am you like to dress your dolls a lot and be very hands-on with them and hold them a lot and um, <clears throat> you don't want to do any scrubbing you want to gently wipe the baby with water wipes you don't want to do it often only if they absolutely have to have it done if you're noticing a lot of dustiness um, if your baby just has dust collecting, like in the creases and stuff, you can get a brush set or um, a couple of really soft, gentle brushes, makeup brushes that aren't really rough. You want to pick out something very soft and you can dust in those little creases. 
Um, you can do the same with their eyes for the closed eyed babies. If you're noticing some dust in there, um, just in their creases, you don't always have to wash them down with water wipes. You can just get a nice brush and just gently get it out of the cracks and crevices of your baby. Um, some people, if they have an open eyed baby and they notice some dust in the eye, they might use a little Q-tip, like the um, end of a Q-tip and try to clear out those eyes very gently. Do not scrub your baby. Don't put chemicals on your baby. If you can avoid it, don't use soaps, detergents. Try to stay clear of those things if you can. Um, and like I said, just use some water wipes. If you don't have water wipes, I would suggest maybe going to the Dollar Tree or getting a hold of a very soft baby washcloth and just putting some um, warm water or room temperature water on it and wringing it out and you can wipe your baby down that way and that's fine too. Just something very gentle. You want to be um, very gentle with their skin. You don't want to scratch their paint or rub it off um, with anything that might be too abrasive. So um, for me, another um, thing with the babies is um, you want to be really careful with their hair. So you see how I'm just like, when I change my babies, I don't like run the clothes over their hair. If they have rooted hair, you want to be very gentle not to pull that hair out. Um, so just be careful when you're changing them and you want to try to gently glide the clothes, um, over their skin. Um, you don't want to be pulling and tugging on their clothes and constantly have that friction, especially if you're like me and you do like to change your babies. You just don't want to have a lot of friction on their skin. Once again, you're trying to be very proactive and protective of their paint. Their paint will not last forever. Their varnish will not last forever. These are art dolls. So another pet peeve that I have is I like to protect my baby's cloth bodies. Um, I really like keeping a onesie on my babies. I just feel like it protects that cloth body and keeps it from getting dirty or stained. Another pet peeve that I have too is protecting their hands and their feet. So I usually tend to put footed um, clothing on my babies. Um, if they don't have the little feetsies in the pants or the pajamas, I usually keep socks on them. I really want to protect their heels and their toes because when you get wear and tear on your reborn, you're going to notice it first on the hands because they're the most exposed and on the tips of the toes and on the heels. I have some matching mittens here that I can put on her as well to protect her little hands. I know that some people really love seeing baby hands and baby feet and if you're holding them you can take them off it's not hard just to slip these off while you're enjoying your baby holding them or bonding with them um, but for me if I can protect them I really want to try to protect them as much as possible so she looks really cute there so let's get into some hair care um, there's not a whole lot of rules with taking care of them. You just want to keep them in a safe place. You want to keep them up from small children who might drop them or dogs. I see that all the time, guys. If you have dogs, you want to keep your babies up in a bassinet or in a crib. Um, you may not even want to leave them down in a bouncer or a swing. I have a dog gate up because um, my dogs are absolutely not allowed in the nursery at all. Um, if you don't have a, a gated room or a special place for your dolls, if they're around your house, you're going to want to keep them in a crib, a bassinet, um, a porta crib, a rock and play, something that's up away from dogs. I can't tell you how many times on Facebook I've seen babies with their fingers and toes chewed off, their faces, their nose. They seem to go right for the nose and the fingers and the toes. So just be aware of your dogs. And like I said, small children who may not know how to handle them well may drop them and crack their paint or something like that. So for hair care now, like I said, I have 
several different dolls that require different hair care. So what most people do is they get a little baby brush and these have softer bristles and that's fine. Like I have a Levi sculpt that I have to use this on um, because his hair is just frizzier and coarser. Um, little Hope, her hair is very fine, very soft. I think it was done with Delta Dawn mohair, which that's what it feels like to me. It's a very high... Uh, premium mohair and it is very soft and just it can break really easily so you're not going to want to put any hats on your babies with rooted hairs um, you want to try to avoid headbands and bows and things like that you really want to try to protect that rooted hair as much as possible um, those things will break the hair and pull it out and things like that so um, I have a little toothbrush here that I use as well to help me um, like really get into those like little fine hairs. I try not to scrape her head or her face. I don't want to use these brushes and scrape the paint off of her face. So these are actually, especially for um, little baby Hope, her skin is darker and you're going to start to see that wear and tear a lot more. So. Um, you're going to want to use, if you need to wet their hair, just some plain water if you can. Like I said, every baby's hair is different. My baby Levi has some harder to manage hair, so I use a brush on his coarser hair and I use um, some conditioning spray. So you can just use detangler or um, water and put a little tiny bit of conditioner in there and mix it up. But for her, I just use the plain water and I learned a new... A new trick from another collector. Once again, your brush is gonna come in handy, this really soft brush, because I don't wanna scrape her skin. This seems to um, work really well on her hair, and it just goes down so nice with this little brush. Her hair is very fine, so I can just use this little brush to keep her hair in place. One more thing too, most Reborns take a magnetic pacifier. Um, not all artists put a protective little disc here um, on their um, magnetic pacifiers. I always make sure I have these little sticky felt discs. I get them on Amazon. It's just like a, a felt circle, I guess you can type in. Um, they're adhesive felt circles. You can find them by the pack on Amazon. I put that over the magnet because I don't want the magnet to scrape up against the paint on their lips. And you want to protect the paint on their lips and the gloss on their lips. So um, I always make sure that I have some sort of felt. If you can't find these felt circles, you can always take an old t-shirt or something and cut out a little circle. Use a quarter, draw a circle, and cut it out, and you can glue it on there if you have to. Um, but try to find something in some way to protect your baby's lips. You don't want to um, start to lose paint on their little lips. It's on their face. So you want to protect their face and their paint there too. That is it for this video. I hope these were some really helpful hints and tips for you guys in taking care of your reborn. These reborns are very expensive and I know we love our babies a lot, so you're gonna wanna do everything you can to protect them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you can think of anything else that I didn't um, mention in this video. And I will see you guys on the next video. You guys take care of yourselves and as always, take care of each other and take care of of those reborn babies. They are expensive. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye guys.